Good afternoon. I want to welcome everyone to today's IT Hot Topics webinar, where we'll be focusing on securing your mobile devices. Thank you for joining us. I know a lot of you are out and about. Be sure to stick through to the end as participants who attend the full session will receive a free electronic course kit from Compass Business Solutions in Mile 2. This free CSS electronic class that you'll receive uh, prepares you for the Certified Security Sentinel exam. So again, you want to stick through this whole thing, fellas because and gals, because uh, you can get a free electronic course kit uh, so, so you can get prepared for that Certified Security Sentinel exam. So that's, that's an amazing uh, opportunity. So thank you, uh, Compass Business Solutions and uh, Mile2. My name is Tricia, and I'm your Experience Manager for Field Nation and your MC for the next 45 minutes. Uh, with me are guest speakers, TJ Arneson and Jules Trono. Uh, for those of you who, uh, who, who are familiar or not familiar with this, this is our third session in our IT Hot Topics webinar series with our partner, Compass Business Solutions. If you missed the first two, please be sure to check it out on the Field Nation YouTube channel. Uh, but uh, anyway, what Compass Business what Compass Business Solutions does is they provide borderless learning programs so you can learn anywhere. Uh, Bill Nation works hard to investigate and gain platform partners who bring additional value and insight into our community. We thank Compass Business Solutions for, for providing today's free training session and free gift of a free electronic course kit. Uh, and uh, we'll, be, we'll continue to bring more learning opportunities your way in the near future. So with that said, let's move forward and keep this webinar interactive. So when you have a question, please submit your question in the question section of your screen. Uh, we will keep them for the Q&A portion of the webinar. So now, without further ado, I'm going to hand over the deck to Mr. TJ Artisan. Thank you. All right. My name is uh, T.P. Arneson. I am a I'm an instructor with uh, Compass Business Solutions. I'm going to be here talking about uh, securing your mobile devices. Uh, basically, what we can do, uh, being users ourselves, um, how we can provide a little bit more security on securing these mobile devices. So the first thing that we need to identify is what exactly are mobile devices. Um, we think of mobile devices, uh, we think of something that uh, uh, our smartphones in particular. Uh, something that I always have with us that we're able to answer emails or update our status on Facebook and pretty much everything in between. Uh, this includes like our iPhones, our Androids, our Windows Mobile, and even Blackberry uh, for some of those still sticking around with them. Our second thought is, um, is uh, tablets. And this is similar because they have uh, almost the same OS's, uh, operating systems as mobile phones, um, but they are still have potentially to have um, cell phone tower connections or Wi-Fi connections on them too. And as we know, anything that connects to the internet can be uh, potentially uh, have a security flaw on it. Um, mobile, uh, they're, they're mostly used with mobile networks, but mainly uh, we see Wi-Fi only uh, tablets. Uh, but one thing I want to make clear too is that uh, we got to consider our laptops as mobile devices now that everyone has a laptop and they take it around with them, they go around uh, to different places, go uh, through the airport, go down to Starbucks and type up you know, a story or anything else like that. We have to keep these in mind when we're talking about security as well. Big thing uh, that we want to realize is that there are two different types of devices based off of who owns them. Uh, this is really where all the security implementations are going to happen. Uh, when a business provides a phone, they usually implement the security standards and limitations in which they're able to do. Uh, a big example was this one is uh, while I was with the military, uh, they issued me a BlackBerry. With this BlackBerry, I had no access to the App Store. I couldn't even text. I couldn't even use the camera on it. All I could do is just place calls and use the BlackBerry Messenger. So a key thing about um, when an organization uh, issued device is that they own the device. <clears throat> they control the security settings on it and they choose what they want to do to see fit. One downfall of this though, however, is that a business may keep a device or apps out of date to make sure that the patches are compatible with the business infrastructure on this one. Uh, as we know, uh, any level of uh, patching or anything else, that is to fix something that's wrong with it, uh, mainly to fix a security flaw. So if we're behind patching or anything else like that, if a company falls too far behind on their patching, this can lead to many known security flaws 
that can that can uh, potentially uh, not only gain access to the wireless device or the mobile device, but also to the business infrastructure. With the security settings on them, they're normally uh, configured before they're issued, and they're configured in conjunction with the security policy or agreement. With these uh, pre-configured secu uh, security settings, it really gives us no control as the company uh, is handling all the security for it. They normally um, block out all the settings for it to where all you can really do is just change the background picture, and that's it. A lot of companies have moved towards uh, bringing your own device uh, policy to avoid hassling over the constant changing mobile devices, you know, the new iPhone coming out, anything else like that. And from here, we can get it from the happiest place on Earth. Um, in some cases, it may be uh, Disney World. In other cases, it may be an Apple store. <laughs> the big thing about a BYOD environment or bring your own device environment is that you are bringing your own personal cell phone into play. Uh, within this, they are employee purchased or user supplied, and within that, uh, we're able to get the latest and greatest, basically. Um, it is actually a great thing now that everyone wants the latest and greatest uh, iPhone or Android phone or anything else like that, because they're taking more and more steps to actually keep you secure. Uh, a lot of the new iOSs and the new Android phones have made it to where they have hardware on them as a, as a standard. All you have to really do is just put a screen lock on it, and then your entire hard drive is, uh, is secured. <clears throat> Another great thing about this is that we are able to adjust all the security settings from our employee, uh, from our own level. So we can go in there and we can say, hey, you know, I want to be a little bit more secure about this versus being, you know, a little bit more lenient about this. Uh, Another thing that we have uh, control over is our administrative rights. We are able to go in there basically as the uh, top level user on the device itself, and we have the ability to download, update, delete, reload, anything else that we're able to uh, manage. We're able to do that as ourselves. Just keep in mind though, is that because we have all of this uh, security settings and all these other settings that we're able to uh, change on our phone, we are the ones that are responsible for keeping our devices secure. And in order to uh, keep the company secure itself. One thing that uh, you may not know um, is a lot of the stuff that your phone does know. Even with the passcodes, uh, our phones may not be as private as we think. On average, 31 apps have identity uh, information. Uh, sometimes this is okay just to uh, know, hey, this is TJ's phone. He commonly you know, gets on Facebook or gets on um, TED Talks, anything else like that. You know, you just uh, they just want to know who is doing what. That way they are able to provide a better service to you, um, ads uh, that are dedicated to you as well. Um, however, just know that this information uh, may be handed out when you don't want it to be handed out. Uh, you could have identity information handed out where it's too much information where you didn't want it to be handed out to. On top of this identity information, a lot of apps can access your location. Uh, they know this by which cellular tower you're connecting to, or even what Wi-Fi point you're using to. On every wireless router itself, uh, they are actually um, have a geolocation on them, so that way they know exactly where they are. Uh, if any of you have driven around um, with using location services on your phone, it always suggests to use Wi-Fi as well. Well, the reason being is that Wi-Fis are known by geological location, so when you turn your Wi-Fi with your location, it's able to pinpoint you exactly. Uh, this can be great and to say that now I know how to, I know exactly where I am on the earth and I know how to find my way over to Starbucks I'm in a city I don't know or it could be handing out this information to potentially malicious users who can see oh he, uh, he's out of town I need to go check to see if anyone's at his house <clears throat> another thing that we're also able to give our information out is actually just simply by taking a picture uh, a lot of pictures now, uh, so that way you can take a picture and upload it on Facebook and it lets you know exactly where you are in the world, can also be used against you as well. Taking a picture, uh, actually, uh, most smartphones adds a geotag. With this geotag, it actually tells you exactly where your phone thinks it is as well. So we're maybe intentionally giving apps access to our communication, um, and within that, I can give access to our um, text, basically our text messages, our media messages, anything else like that. Uh, we have to be wary of what apps that we have because they can have access to this information as well. A lot of people, uh, you know, they send sensitive information over text messages, um, such as like passwords or the gate code to get into a building, anything else like that. 
We just have to know what apps are on our phone that may be uh, potentially uh, able to view this information. So whenever we do install a new app, we have to say, hey, yeah, what information are you allowed to look at and do I agree to this? Every time you download an app, you are agreeing to its contract saying, I am allowed to do this and this. <clears throat> According to Lookout, 91% uh, of consumers are concerned about the privacy on their smartphones, but only 7% are confident in their ability to understand what information is being accessed on their phone. This is a big uh, concern for business as an opportunity for you uh, as a network and a security consultant for it. <clears throat> Any of us can easily get tricked into uh, connecting to a malicious network even if we're not paying attention. We've all heard customers say at least one of these things. Uh, I thought I was connecting to the airport network. I thought I was connecting into the hotel or the Starbucks. I didn't know the guy in the hoodie was following me. I didn't know that anybody, that they're specifically looking for my information. Uh, what I actually have a picture of over here on the right-hand side is what's called a pineapple router. What this pineapple router does is it um, kind of uses a flaw within this uh, wireless uh, technology saying that, you know, whenever your phone has a known uh, Wi-Fi access point on it, it reaches out saying, hey, um, Joe at home, uh, are you there? Here's, my, uh, here's me trying to log into you. What this pineapple router does is it reaches out saying, Sure, I'm Joe at home.com, or Joe, I'm Joe at home, a wireless router. You can connect to me. It basically uh, takes advantage of uh, any unsecured uh, Wi Fi. So if you have a publicly unsecured Wi Fi, chances are uh, you may be connecting to that Wi Fi, but there is that small chance that somebody may be running something like this in order to have a man in the middle attack. Um, so that's a big thing to know is when you are being mobile, you want to keep an eye out for public Wi-Fi just because if there's no password on it, it's a high security risk for man-in-the-middle attacks. Um, cell phones are in 100 they are on the cellular tower. However, a lot of these security uh, compromises can be avoided by not connecting to Wi-Fis or turning the Wi-Fi off and using just the mobile data. Uh, another thing that is um, a lot of the newer Bluetooth technology has gotten over is called blue snarfing. Um, it's something that used to be in the past, so it is for older phones. Uh, it was really meant to just to deliver adware, um, but that may be something like somebody may be following close to you and they have to be within 30 some feet in order to actually access uh, Bluetooth technology. But a lot of it has really be, um, become over the top over security, so this isn't really much of a flaw anymore. But don't freak out just yet. <laughs> Uh, this is more like a uh, stranger danger conversation that we parents had with our kids, uh, that uh, parents had with us as when we were kids. Uh, but we, uh, the main thing is just to be aware of what's going on around you and avoid doing anything that's overly dangerous. Uh, for anyone who hasn't got this joke, it's a reference to a uh, phone freaking with the pH, uh, which a lot of hackers see as their history roots. Some basic, simple security things that we can do to prevent uh, compromisation of our data is number one, just having a screen lock. And within that screen lock, put a password on it. Don't do just a swipe or anything else like that. It may be easy and fast for you to secure, but somebody could be standing over your shoulder, see that quick little uh, swipe that you did, especially when it's just a line across the top, and then they now know how to access your phone. So if you accidentally leave your phone there while you go use the restroom, or if you don't even notice that it went missing, uh, all that simple password is is just now got compromised just because uh, he was looking over your shoulder. Another big thing to uh, just implement some security side is just be very wary um, with open Wi-Fi, especially if you're not using any kind of uh, security uh, implementations on your phone. Uh, just connecting to an airport, uh, you're connecting to the, the airport router as if you were just to let everybody in on your home router. Uh, they are connected to the same network. They can see all that information that's being passed around. It is something that you have to be very wary of just because all the information is sent from your phone to a wireless router that you may think may be uh, the airport's wireless router or anything else like that, and then going out to the internet. Another thing is when you are on the app market, uh, just be wary of uh, trusted apps and what are not trusted apps. Uh, so, you know, if something has a really big name on it, it's Facebook. If you notice that there's a Facebook app and it is built by somebody other than Facebook Incorporated, uh, chances are they may be trying to pull information that is not associated within Facebook. <laughs> so uh, 
one thing I do have to give a little bit of credit for is the Apple App Store is very strict on what apps they allow for it. Not saying that they're completely secure. Um, they may still allow you know, a certain amount of information to be pulled for it, but they do a little bit more uh, of a strenuous job of who is allowed to have an app on the store. Uh, for those Android users out there, Google Play Store is a little bit more open and, down, uh, and able to have a little bit different kinds of apps on there as well. Um, so that's something to be a little bit more cautious on, especially when you are planning to da uh, download an app. The big one is see what permissions that the app is uh, capable of. And on top of that, too, just keep an eye on it saying, hey, if it starts doing you know, funky stuff to my phone, you may have got a malicious app. A huge security setting, and you wouldn't believe it, but it's um, social media. A lot of people post an excessive amount of information on there. Um, I've had, uh, um, so, uh, I'm sorry to say, but I had a family member who posted a picture of their credit card, of their son's first credit card, saying, oh, look, my son just received his first credit card in the mail, but it had all of the digits across the front, and since it was an Amex card, it also had the security code on the front as well. So they basically just handed out their credit card to every one of their friends on Facebook whether they were their actual friends or not. So that's just a, an extreme one. Um, another one is just being saying, hey, I'm at this location, I'm at this location. Just be wary when you're saying, you know, I'm away from home or I'm on vacation, I'm having a good time. Um, my, my mother's maiden name is this. Uh, you wouldn't believe how often that's on there. Um, any of the security settings that you use to reset your password, a lot of that information can be pulled from social media. So just be careful of if you see that answer over and over again, uh, mainly like the mother's maiden name, if you have that on your Facebook, just be very cautious just because that may be provided to um, break into one of your passwords without you even knowing about it. One common thing that we have on our uh, cell phones that we can also have, or our mobile devices that we can also have on our laptops is going to malicious websites. Uh, when cell phones first have web browser capabilities, there wasn't a lot of programs built to um, basically have any malicious intent on cell phones. However, now people are using their cell phones more than they're using their laptops. So the attention has kind of moved towards um, having a little, more, a little bit more malicious intent towards mobile browsers versus actual browsers. So don't think just because I'm using this on my phone that it's safer, it actually may be more potentially uh, dangerous. Uh, so websites that you know are trusted um, and you know be wary of, uh, of malicious websites websites you know you shouldn't be going to um, another one on there too just like laptops is don't click on pop-ups or ads uh, mobile phones are notorious for having just ads that look like the actual web page but in fact they're leaving you somewhere else and then now you have you clicked on something and it may have uh, potentially installed something on your phone um, another thing is emails uh, just like on laptops, don't click on links within emails uh, that you don't trust. Uh, I would go directly to the app, especially when it is something saying, hey, um, this is Joe from your bank. Uh, please provide me your password information so that way I can make sure your account is secure. Uh, chances are <laughs> they may have put in the same logo of the bank. However, you notice some stuff is misspelled. Um, it doesn't look like an official letter. And they're asking for more information that they should be legally asking for. So just be very cautious. Um, and just use the apps that are directly on your phone or their official websites. Another thing that we can do to secure our mobile devices a little bit more is to add a VPN on there. Uh, we can add a VPN, um, mainly if this is if we're using this for work as well, we can have a corporately provided VPN. Um, we did talk about this in our last session. We talked about uh, SSL VPNs. That's just one type of solution. Um, just any type of VPN solution to where you are um, not belonging to the network that you're connecting to, you're belonging to another a network somewhere else that is uh, blocking a lot of that man in the middle of tax, uh, blocking a lot of malicious intent, anything else like that, just because your connection isn't where you really are. It's really you're virtually in some other location. This can be attained through a corporate VPN or a public VPN. There are many services that charge a monthly fee, yearly fee for them, and what it does is it actually encrypts your data through that wireless point, avoiding a lot of the man manual attacks, uh, and actually just putting it out somewhere else in the United States or somewhere else in the world, um, so that way you know, your information is more secure. Uh, just be wary of VPN services on there. Uh, there's many, many trusted names for it. It's a very simple service to set up. Um, just uh, it depends on your level of security of what you want implemented for it. If you want more privacy, certain uh, VPNs are a little bit more 
uh, adept to that. In other ones, they just are providing a secure connection from the Wi-Fi to another location. Uh, another one is data encryption. Uh, a lot of iPhones, uh, the new iPhones coming out right, right now, they have data encryption built into them. On Android-based phones, you actually have to go into your settings and implement data encryption. What it does is it makes it to where if somebody, if somebody has your phone and they couldn't figure out the password for it, they can't just you know, hook it up to a computer and then access all your information. That data encryption is hashing out your information to where nobody is able to attain it even if they steal your cell phone. So any way that we can make it just a little bit more secure uh, always helps out. One thing, and I have done this because um, mobile devices are very easy to lose, is having remote wiping. And that can be implemented uh, with Find My iPhone, um, Find My Android, anything like that. Uh, normally it has to be uh, set up beforehand um, as a location finder or anything else like that. Uh, but once you are able to have this remote wiping capable, if you do lose your cell phone, if you do lose, uh, if, if you know it was stolen or anything else like that, you're able to remotely wipe it. And what this does is this clears out all information on your phone to where it is completely unrecoverable. Another one is staying up on the new latest and greatest. Uh, there's a new software coming out. Uh, the iPhones just came out with the new uh, software. Android actually is coming out with their Marshmallow, so now they're coming out with uh, another version of that. It's staying current with the software on it. It's not just giving us these latest and greatest features. It's also giving us the latest and greatest in security. One thing more is user training. What that training is is not only for ourselves, but also for those around us. If we're seeing somebody who is um, going to sites they shouldn't be going to, is doing something insecure, just connecting up to every Wi-Fi, always leaving their Wi-Fi on, um, not knowing the best security practices for it, it's important to know just the, just the basics of security just to understand uh, what we need to do to train others. Some of the security apps that are available, um, it can be included from anywhere from Avast, Find My iPhone, uh, McAfee, Kaspersky, Norton, Lookout, there's many different security tools, and the big thing about mobile devices is that, in general, they do not have any of these. When we get it a laptop, our first thought is to put some kind of antivirus, put some kind of uh, security uh, software on our computer. However, a lot of us don't do this for our phone. So we may have a secure laptop with uh, antivirus, anti-malware, um, you know, safe web, anything else like that that we're able to uh, implement a lot of security on our mobile devices. Uh, or on the laptops, uh, we, are, we need to implement on, on our mobile devices as well. So with the user training, uh, the big thing about this is to remove the complication make it simple. How do I, how do I just say, hey, this is the best way to stay secure on? Uh, one thing, the, the easiest thing to do is just saying, hey, you know, these apps are trusted apps. Uh, you know, if, if I install Snapchat from the Snapchat one, it is trusted. If I install Facebook from Facebook, it's trusted. Um, and bank cases, if I if I install SunTrust app, I, I know that, and as long as I know that this is by SunTrust and it's trusted through the App Store, then this is an official app for it. I'm not going out and downloading um, apps that, that say that they can do this, however, they require all information and later find out that they're very malicious. So just uh, check the validity, uh, validity of, of new apps and also of if they're approved or not. Another big thing is to check the website you're going to. If you're going to a bank website, logging in and then start moving around money, anything else like that, you want to make sure that you're on a HTTPS connection. What HTTPS is is that it's using um, SSL encryption to make that information less readable. When you're sending stuff over HTTP, it's basically clear text. Anybody else can read that. So we just want to identify when we are connecting to a site, such as like our banking site, anything else like that, we want to make sure that it is using encryption on that website uh, so that way our information is staying secure. And that can just be easily as looking up at the user bar and seeing is it HTTP or is it HTTPS. When we are using open Wi-Fi, uh, one of the best things that you can do is use a VPN service, whether this is corporate or, or a public VPN, uh, because this makes it to where our information is hidden, uh, where we're not just you know throwing out all of our information from our apps and from our phones. Uh, we're not just throwing out information over the Wi-Fi. Instead, we are pushing it out to a different location to where this information can't be uh, subjected to man-in-the-middle attacks. 
unapproved websites. <laughs> this is really since the dawn of the internet. Um, it is everyone has known what websites to go to and what not uh, what websites to not go to. If you're wanting to get the movie that hasn't been released on Blu-ray um, and you go to a touring site, chances are you're downloading something else malicious on your device by getting that movie that nobody else has. There's a reason why it's free because nothing in the world is free. Um, if there's other um, Adult sites, I would not suggest going to them just because you may be installing, uh, and it's a well-known fact too, you may be installing something you don't want to install on your phone or on your laptop or any mobile device. Any other known malicious websites, uh, just be very wary of what website you're going to. Uh, make sure that they're spelled right uh, as well because you may be going to a site you think is the right site. However, you spell, uh, you put an A instead of an E, and you're actually going to something that was intentionally put there to say, oh, he put a spelling error. He really wants to go to my website. Um, so within that, too, it's just keeping the best practices. Uh, and, that, and that one is just... Just knowing how you would navigate the internet on your laptop or on your on your PC at home, do the same thing on your mobile device. It's not more secure, it's actually starting to be almost less secure, almost only because of the amount of people moving to it. When their hackers see where people are commonly, um, what they're commonly accessing, uh, uh, what they're commonly using, because they want to target everybody. They don't want to target a small majority or a small minority of who's accessing what, where they're at. They want to hit the majority just because they want to hit one out of 100, anything else like that. So just use best practices and just um, use everything that you would normally use to keep yourself safe on the internet. Uh, a lot of these sources too, we had uh, with Field Nation, I'd like to thank them, uh, Compass Program, we have our blog available. Uh, we have a lot of tips on there as well. Uh, with that, we have uh, courses from Mile2. Um, I wanted to add that in there. With Mile2, uh, I recently did their uh, professional ethical hacker certification, gave it a lot of information, a lot of hands on the keyboard knowledge of what is, can potentially be um, done to, uh, maliciously, uh, to have malicious intent towards a mobile phone, a laptop, anything else like that. Uh, and they, that's, actually, uh, that's actually who's offering the CSS class as well. Uh, within that, we have borderless learning, um, Great, re, uh, great resources. Jules will be talking that, about that a little bit later. Um, we also got a lot of our information from Macworld and the IMCA, uh, IMCCA as well. And that'll wrap it up to the questions, and I'll be handing it over to Jules. Uh, while we're waiting for the questions for that, uh, Jules is going to go ahead and talk, and then, uh, uh, and then once we have all the questions added in there, we'll go ahead and go back to answering a lot of those questions. All right, fantastic. That's a bunch to do. Okay, uh, first I want to thank TJ for that uh, eye-opening, uh, very applicable training session. I love how you provided uh, not the information that, that the, the providers, our technicians can use, but also how you package it in a way to, um, to make it a, to make it like a, a kit in the box almost for, for, for training, for training users. Uh, me, myself, I'm, I'm in marketing, so a lot of that was uh, very eye-opening to me, especially the 31 apps that can access your identity. Uh, so TJ, you and I will be having a one-on-one -on -one session after this webinar, so you can help make sure I'm secure. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, more than happy. Thank you. Or I will reach out to uh, one of our uh, 65,000 providers as well to do that. Uh, but while we are uh, waiting for questions, Jules, uh, I know you have some great opportunities including that, that a free class that uh, we'd love for you to share. Excellent. Thanks a bunch, Tricia. And thanks, TJ. So what TJ mentioned a little bit earlier is that um, you're, everybody who attended today is going to get a free electronic course kit for the CSS Security Sentinel training. So once you go through the electronic course, you can take the, the exam to become a Security Sentinel. It's a, it's a known uh, security certification. It also helps prepare you for the higher level security certification, which is CISSO. It's Certified Information Systems Officer. That is a security certification that employers are looking for right now for people to come in with this type of knowledge. So take advantage of the free training. Uh, if you find that this is something that is, uh, you think that you are able to go provide these services to your customers, then sign up for the higher level training and we're, we're just really happy to help you do that. TJ also mentioned certified professional, uh, uh, professional ethical hacker. Uh, 
so there, there are many levels of certification training for security, and they're all very, very important to employers right now. Everybody is concerned about cyber attacks. We recently had uh, uh, somebody embed some uh, code into our website, and the way we have everything set up, immediately after the code got embedded, we got notified that code was embedded, and we were able to take it off and, and plug the hole. Uh, these are the types of things that your customers are interested in. They want to know that you understand what they need to be looking for on their websites, on their laptops, on their mobile phones, on their tablets, every different way that they communicate. So uh, please take advantage of looking at the security training. You can find the security training in our borderless learning programs as well. Um, the borderless learning program for networks includes the Cisco CCNA and CCNP security training. Um, again, we've got the mile two uh, security training in our programs. So take a look at that and you'll have the ability to get the foundational knowledge from the CompTIA Security Plus and other things and then the higher level knowledge which are the certifications employers are looking for. Um, you can also, if you prefer to learn at your own pace, find the security training uh, in the Borderless Learning On Demand programs and particularly in the cybersecurity. Uh, cybersecurity, of course, is going to have all of those uh, all, all of those important training classes in them. So uh, take a look at that. And then uh, if you happen to be in Honolulu in November, come see us. We'll be at TechNet uh, Asia Pacific. It's really rough trying to work that event. I'm telling you, one of the worst places in the world. No, it's fabulous. So if you're going to be in uh, Hawaii, and you are attending TechNet Asia Pacific, let us know and we'll set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you. Um, your, you can invite your military and government customers to the PACOM VTC Tech Exchange, which is hosted by Compass every year uh, in conjunction with the Department of Defense, Cisco, uh, and a few, other, um, a few other companies like AMX, Econo, Extron, Crestron, and, and some others. So. Thank you very much for spending the time with us today. TJ, why don't we answer some questions? And everybody, please stay on the line because Trisha's got a few things to tell you, too, about some things going on with Build Nation. Perfect. Um, one of the first questions I had on there, too, and I'd be more than happy answering, um, are there antivirus programs recommended for mobile devices and similar programs that are available for the commonplace for the desktop and laptops? Uh, a lot of those uh, on that previous slide, and you will get a copy of the slide, by the way, because I saw those a couple of other questions. On the previous, uh, previous slide, um, I put in a couple of different uh, security suites. Um, a lot of the big, um, like laptop and, and uh, PC or uh, desktop users, they use stuff like Kaspersky, uh, McAfee, um, uh, Norton, stuff like that. A lot of these same... Um, antivirus, anti-malware, any of these other big security suites, they do the same thing for mobile devices as well. Uh, they wouldn't miss out on the market on that one, so a lot of them have moved over to them. Uh, I personally use like Kaspersky or um, uh, IOBit. They have a, a whole suite for that one as well. Uh, another question that I seen on there too was, um, can virus protection affect your ability to enter a password in a field, i.e. an email password field? Um, the antivirus itself will not allow, uh, it, it is mainly just looking for malicious code on your mobile device. It's looking through your hard drive and trying to figure out if there's anything on there that shouldn't be on there. It's not going to actually um, help you prevent it. It's really there as a, re as a retroactive um, source to look through that. There might be some other uh, things in there as well saying, hey, you know, this prevents against cross-site scripting or cross-site scripting or anything else that may be preventing you from putting a password in there, but I, it's not going to be the virus protection itself. <clears throat> Another question we had on there is, when is the best time to use a VPN when on a Wi-Fi? Well, uh, first thing I want to start off with is, uh, especially on mobile devices, uh, this is really good practice. I would highly suggest getting into is if you're just out roaming around, if you're if you know you're going to be just in your car going to a different place, or you're going to be walking around, anything else like that, I would highly suggest turning off your Wi-Fi if you're not using it. Um, same thing as your location services. If you're not um, you know actively using uh, maps or anything else like that, or or trying to find your way to the to the nearest Starbucks to get a coffee, I would highly suggest turning off a lot of these services. Just because if you're not using them, you don't want anybody messing with them. 
So the best time for VPN is actually as soon as you connect to a um, uh, to a Wi-Fi or as soon as you're off of it. A lot of VPN services actually provide a um, a kill safe feature. Within this uh, kill safe feature, what it does is it doesn't allow any connections to happen until the VPN is active. And what this does is because a lot of these apps just reach out for home, they try to say, especially like Facebook, if it doesn't have an active connection, it's just saying, hey, I need a connection. Somebody give me a connection. And if you're on a public Wi-Fi without a VPN active, it is going to reach out there and throw that information out there immediately. Uh, you can have the VPN just open up as soon as you open up your Wi-Fi, and then what that does is that all that, that encryption on there happens. Uh, all right. The other uh, another question I had um, was the 31 apps. That actually was not just 31 specific apps. That's an average of 31 apps on your phone. Many many apps need identity uh, identity um, services so that way they know who you are. Uh, something like Netflix, they need to know that's you logging on there. Um, your bank needs to know that's you. Um, Facebook needs to know it's you. So it's in uh, many, many apps require identity information, but it's the amount of identity information that we're worried about. If, if, if uh, something like if you're downloading just a uh, calculator app on your phone, and these have been notorious for it, if I'm downloading a calculator app on my phone, it doesn't need to know who I am, where I'm at. Um, it doesn't need to know a lot of permissions on there. So just be very cautious on which apps you are and and just know which apps require what information for it. <clears throat> and the difference between paid and free VPNs, that was another question I had on there. Um, this is a big one too because most of the times um, if you do something well, uh, you never do it for free. <laughs> so uh, the difference between a free VPN and a um, paid for VPN is most of the time, especially good VPNs, they'll offer you a, um, a sample of it saying, hey, you get 500 megabits of, uh, to try out the VPN service, see if you like it, anything else like that. And then after that, you know, if you want to send any more amount of data, then you need to have, uh, okay, uh, then you need to have, um, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my uh, train of thought. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, the difference between the paid and the, and the free VPNs. So on a free one, they're going to give you basic services, anything else like that. And of course, paid, you're going to get more out of it. You might get something like that kill safe feature on there. You might get something as in you're able to pick where your uh, output is being put at, whether you're going to be in the U.S. and where in the U.S. or even in a different country. Um, if you're traveling to a different country as well, this is where it really gets big over the fact that if I'm in the U.K. for a couple of weeks, I want to have my connection happen as if I'm in the U.S. because I want to get U.S. news. I want to get the uh, what's going on in you know the in the Saints game. Um, hopefully they're not horribly losing again. <laughs> um, TJ, there it? was a there was a question on. Um, do you know where people can find out where the top offending apps or? social sites or games or whatever, is there a way for these guys to find that information? Uh, what was that? The, the top offending apps and things that, that, may uh, mess with, that, that may mess with people that are downloading them, the, the things that would be, uh, you know, accessing uh, information that you don't necessarily want accessed. Is there any place for them to find that? Not the well-known ones, because if they're well-known, um, then they're not going to be... Um, they're not going to be developed anymore. Uh, the big thing on it is is just be very because they're constantly changing. Um, they, if it's known that it's a security flaw, then they're gonna they're gonna remove it. Um, so they're gonna constantly say, "Hey, download this Facebook app." And if you notice that is number one, the Google Play Store or the Apple Market, uh, they don't trust this vendor. And on top of that, too, it's not uh, if it's a Facebook app and it's not Facebook offering this. Chances mm -hmm. are that one's a malicious one as well. There's not really a big um, uh, a hot spot of this one is uh, this one can do this, this one can do that. Um, that may be something the power of Google may know that I may not. Okay. All right. Do we have any other questions coming in? Well, then what I'd like to do is turn this back over to Tricia, who's going to tell you about some cool things. With, uh, that are going on right now with Field Nation. Thank you, Jules. So, uh, so we have two, two features I want to talk about to you today. So company rating visibility to providers. You guys have been waiting for this. 
So, uh, so if you haven't, if you haven't heard, just want to share with you. You know, uh, for you who are using the new layout, uh, you'll be able to see the individual ratings and comments left for a buyer by the other providers. So by default, you'll be given uh, information specific to your experience with that buyer, but you may also view marketplace data uh, that um, that the other the other providers have uh, have shown, uh, especially if you don't have any personal history with that, that particular buyer. Uh, so when you click on the overall company rating, uh, you'll be brought down to a drill down of the actual ratings which comprise that overall rating. Uh, and if you're not using that new layout, uh, if you're not sure you're using the new layout, uh, uh, if you look in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, there'll be a little, uh, a little, a uh, little, uh, View in new layout link. Uh, so you just click on that upper right hand uh, that, that that link in the right, upper right hand corner of your screen, and that'll bring you to that new view. So you can check that out. Also in the new view uh, are informational hovers uh, uh, for, for providers. So uh, so again, if you're using that new layout, uh, you'll have informational hovers uh, that tell you useful details about the job and the company is from. Uh, so these hovers appear in two spots. So one is the type of work. So there'll be an info income next to the type of work. The hover uh, displays the amount of jobs the provider has completed with this type of work, uh, what your average pay rate has been, and what the marketplace average is for that type of work uh, in your in your region. Uh, and then there's also a company hover. Uh, so there'll be an info icon next to the company name, or uh, or there'll be a message indicating uh, the company's name. Uh, can't be shown because they haven't worked with them yet. Uh, you haven't worked with them yet. Uh, so that hover, it creates, uh, it'll tell you how many jobs you've completed with this provider or with this buyer, uh, how many are currently active, and how many were canceled. Uh, it'll also show you the total amount earned, the percentage of times uh, you've countered uh, that they were accepted, and the average duration of the jobs. So uh, I know this is a this is great information. Those hovers have been out there for a little bit, but in case you haven't uh, come across them yet or haven't uh, played around with them or are not in that new layout, you got to check it out. It's, it, it's fantastic information. Uh, a lot of it's what you've been asking for, so we are very happy to, uh, to give that to you. Uh, so with that, um, I'd like to thank uh, Jules Trono and TJ Arneson for today's presentation. Jules, do you have any final words you'd like to say before we close the session? Well, thank you, everybody, for participating today. Take a look at the blog uh, that we post on the Field Nation website. When you look at Partners and Compass Business Solutions, you'll see that there's uh, a group you can join. All of the information, the questions and answers get posted there. So uh, take a look at that, and uh, we'll make sure that we keep bringing uh, valuable training to Field Nation. Fantastic. Well, thanks again, for everyone, for attending. And uh, you can watch, watch your email for the follow-up uh, that will include a copy of the presentation, a link to the replay, uh, and uh, any, any from information that we, we provided uh, in today's session. Oh, the, the uh, uh, more information about that, that free training session that you, you definitely need to take advantage of. Yeah. So thank You'll you so much. all of that in email, so, along Perfect. with the link to YouTube where this uh, training will be posted. Perfect. Jules, TJ, thank you so much. Everyone who attended, thank you, and have a great day.